Now with your local sports, here's sports director Manny Diaz. Well, historic season usually means one to remember. In this case for the one-time Kentucky head coach, Billy Gillespie and his Ranger College Rangers, the National Junior College Athletic Association, well, sure saying something else. Last week, Abilene High did Permian a solid uh, by beating San Angelo Central. This week, the Angry Orange doing their best Billy Bob Thornton impersonation, asking Mojo, can they be perfect? Des Bryant, but no Tony Romo. It's kind of like having sugar, but no Kool-Aid. Peanut butter, no jelly. Last season, the Dallas Cowboys scored a taste of those two combos too many times. The Wiley Bulldogs 6-2 overall undefeated in district. Can anyone stop the dogs? Well, although Baylor has yet to make anything official regarding the firing of head coach Art Bryles, let's face it, this relationship is done and by the looks of things, about to get pretty messy. Week in and week out this fall, it's going to be a gauntlet. Yeah. I mean, from the Texas Tech teams of America to Baylor to TCU. Has that kind of set in with you? You know, uh, no. Well, if there was any question if San Angelo's own Davis Martin could handle the national stage of the NCAA tournament, let's just say he had plenty of answers, highlights, and reaction coming up from Lubbock. Now, the ladies around here love them some Texas country here in West Texas. Are, have you gotten a feel of that just yet? No, I haven't gotten a feel. With Hamlin and Albany tied at 28 at the break, the first half had the makings of a regional quarterfinal to remember. If starting and winning an NCAA regional tournament game was on the old bucket list for San Angelo's own Davis Martin, well, you can officially check that off. Now with your local sports, here's sports director Manny Diaz. Well, sometimes you just got to take one for the new cell phone. Couldn't make that up even if I tried to explain Derek McFadden's latest injury that had him undergo surgery today to repair his broken elbow. With no McFadden at Cowboys minicamp today, heck, why not let Des Bryant put us all to shame losing the shirt to Beat the Texas Heat. <laughs> Joking aside, the Cowboys could be without McFadden for the next two months, including training camp. But with the Cowboys' stable of backs, including first-round draft pick Zeke Elliott, the team looks to be just fine, especially with Elliott getting more time with the ones. He, uh, he didn't want to miss any time. Regardless of the injury or McFadden's past history of being hurt, he was fourth in the league in rushing a year ago and is still seen as an asset to the Cowboys. Well, in case you missed it, the Baylor Board of Regents met on Monday. Just didn't talk about the employment status of head coach Art Bryles. Meanwhile, according to Chip Brown of Horns Digest, a source has informed him the Baylor Regents could be meeting later this week with a group of big money donors that have contributed to the program's $300 million stadium, to talk about Bryles. The old ball coach has eight years left on his contract with less than $40 million in guaranteed money remaining on his deal. Well, back in the 325, it was day one of the Angelo Coaches Clinic uh, right here in the Concho Valley. It's always a great time to pick the brains of some of the best college coaches in America. Not to mention some of the all-time greats in high school football like Katie head coach Gary Joseph, who's won 168 games and four state titles What the helm at the Tigers. Today, he was sharing thoughts from his Katie defense, plus a few teams in West Texas he likes to keep, keep an eye on. You know, I've been watching, you know, the San Angelo and how they've changed it. When his career is all said and done, Gary Joseph can make a case for one of the best in Texas. Katie owns eight state titles. Four came under his watch and are currently tied with Salina and South Lake Carroll for the most UIL state titles. Well, Angelo State officially has a new director of athletics. School president Dr. Brian May announced today that he's removing the interim tag and naming longtime track and field slash cross country coach James Reed as the director of athletics. Reed has been influential in ASU success in track and field during his tenure. ASU track and field teams have finished in the top three at every LSC championship during his time. All right, uh, Strohs in St. Louis tonight needing a win, having lost five of the last seven. Top fifth, Colby Rasmus having some fun with this old team. The solo homer to right. Astros up 2-1. Bottom six now, Brandon Moss answers back with the solo shot of his own. The bomb to left, and it's back to a one-run game. Top seven now, Monica, hope you're watching. Doug Fister, the pitcher with the two RBI single to center. Carlos Gomez. Oh, wait for it. Wait for it. Safe at the Safe. plate. As yes. the Strohs going to win it 5-2. to two. Meanwhile, well. Bob, here you go. Ooh. Rangers out west tonight in Oakland. And after just taking one last night. Oh, man, didn't they? Leading the A's 7-1 to one in the third. So, although Davis Martin's baby face and high and tight haircut may scream freshman, his seven innings of work, four strikeouts, and only one run allowed, on the other hand, did not. It didn't really seem like he threw like a freshman. He seemed pretty confident up there. Um, 
he seemed to look to his teammates for confidence, and he had this tenacity about him when he when he knew he made bad pitches that he came back. I think I just had to take it as another day at the office. Uh, I mean, pregame, that's when you kind of get to soak it all in, like, hey, this is where we are. Like, Texas was kind of the same atmosphere. TCU is kind of the same atmosphere. So I think uh, playing those bigger teams in the Big 12 uh, <laughs> definitely prepared all of us for this kind of atmosphere. There's a lot to be said about, you know, how grounded a young man he is to be able to pitch out of the jams. And he, he, he understands it's a baseball game. and. I need to go do what I've done, uh, what he's done his whole life. Well, from one freshman to another, Davis Martin is now set the table for Stephen Gingry, who will get the start on Saturday night against New Mexico. From Dan Law Field, I'm Manny Diaz, KIDY, Fox News First. Well, imagine going through life with all the motivation and courage in the world, but only a dream would allow it all to come true. For Heiko 7th grader Fernando Fonseca, well, he no longer needs a dream to play football. It's a scheme, it's the plan, it's the X's and O's that give heroes a fighting chance. His name is Fernando Fonseca, 7th grader from Heiko. His love for the game is larger than life, but spina bifida, a defect that disables 1 in 8 births in America, has sidelined Fernando until this season. Of course, we got a chance to watch him grow up from when he was really tiny and, and uh, you know, uh, I understand that maybe in some ways he doesn't, doesn't have uh, uh, some of the capabilities of the other kids, but in other ways uh, we think he's probably uh, more special than any, anybody we have here. Every single practice, every single day, hey coach, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready to go, you know, during the game. Oh, I want to get in there, coach. So after having made his case, Fernando got his chance against Goldthwait in a play tailor-made just for him. When we, we started practicing, the uh, the Fernando special is what, what you get to see. Coach told me the to play, pro route Liz, Fernando special. Oh, one oh, oh, ready. I thought they were going to, like, when, when I went went to the, when I was getting to get started, and I thought, and I thought myself, I think, I think they're going to tackle me. And, but they didn't tackle me. Man, it was awesome just to go out there and get to see my best friend go out and score uh, those two-point conversions. Really uh, warmed my heart. But of course, Fernando had an audible in mind for his very own play, the dive. That was a little extra, okay? That was all by himself, but that's kind of, that is Fernando. You know, he does his own deal. You know, we have this, we have it all planned. This is how we're going to do it. And uh, I'm surprised he didn't do a flip in the end zone, you know, <laughs> or get up on top of it, dunk it on the goalpost or something. That's just, that's kind of the way he is. As for what's next for Fernando. This year I'm going to run track, but I don't know about the, um, I, I don't know if I'm going to do football next year or in a year, but but I'm, I'm sure I'm going to do track um, every year. So what motivates you? What inspires you? And second thought, what if life had a different game plan drawn up for you? You think you're different than anybody else? No, sir. How so? Um, because I can, I can run and everybody can run. I can run too and, and I can walk and, and a lot of people can run and walk. I know if you could take Fernando and you put his mindset into 99% of guys out there, uh, you'd win a whole lot of football games. Actually, you'd probably never lose a football game. From his motivation. We want to, we want to win the tomorrow game. And I want you to win. Get, let's go Tigers! Whoa! Let's go! To his made-for-TV smile, Fernando shouldn't be just an inspiration to us all, but how we approach life, one two-point conversion at a time.